Hello, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. My name is Débora. I am from, I am a journalist. I am from Encora Brasil Division. And it's an honor for me to be here presenting you this Dev Week. Today, we are going to talk about fictional and real women in tech with Veronica Ramirez. Veronica is from Colombia. Hello, Veronica. Hi, Deborah. Thank you for How are you? the introduction. Good, you, you? Have, you have a nice introduction. Let me read for everybody. You are a Magister in Innovation Management, Computer Scientist, and Interactive Media Designer with over 20, 12 years of leadership experience managing offshore teams for medium and large sized projects. Focus on building and increasing customer engagement and proficiency in client service and relationship development. Love to travel, learn about new cultures and their history. Enjoy a perfect book and a good movie. Me too. <laughs> Very passionate about work, but always looking to balance with family life. Very nice. And uh, just remember, everybody, before she starts, please follow us in our social media. We have the links here. And uh, if you have any doubt, Veronica will answer by sharing. So you can ask, you can write in our chat here. And uh, have a good presentation, Veronica. See you soon. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fictional and Real Women in Tech. I'm very glad to have you here today. Um, so, did you know that women may put off working in the tech industry if there are less opportunities for promotions? Well, recent research from the Women in Technology Survey 2023 revealed that when asked why women may be put off working in the tech industry, the most popular answer in their survey was that the early misconception from a lack of education in young girls. This was closely followed by male domination and a lack of development and progression opportunities for female tech workers. This reinforces the importance of showcasing female role models and case studies and of women who have had success with promotions and climbing the ladder in tech, which is something that we are going to review today. So for centuries, we have had inspiring women find a place in history for their important contribution to the society. In this session, I would like to focus on those who have an impact in tech, and not only from real life, but also from fiction. Uh, the list is long, so I may be missing a lot of them, and I apologize for that, but I, I will try to do my best to recognize some that are not so known. However, this story must start ages ago in the first century of our era with Epatia of Alexandria and her designs for scientific instruments such as the Astrolab uh, used to measure the altitude of the stars, the planets, and the sun that will be used until the 19th century. The graduated hydrometer used to measure the relative gravity and density of the liquids. Our journey continues to the 18th century with one John Yi, another scientific with contribution to the astronomy. She lived in China between 1768 and 1797 only 29 years, but in which she was able to explain and prove how the equinoxes move, calculate their movement, and describe the lunar and, and solar eclipses. For one of her experiments, she placed a round table in a garden pavilion to be the globe, hung a crystal lamp for the ceiling to be the sun, and on one side of the table, she had a round mirror like the moon. She moved the three objects according to the astronomical principles until the three were aligned with the Earth in the middle, showing that lunar eclipses occur every time the moon moves directly through the, through the shadow of the Earth. And from China, we go to the United Kingdom in the 19th century, where Ada Love lives. She is very well known because she developed the first computational program of history to be processed by the analytic engine of Charles Babbage. Besides what we know today as algorithm, she introduced what we call a loop, a group of instructions that are executed several times and the subroutines, a part of a program that can be required at any moment. 
She also developed a vision of the capability of computer to go beyond mere calculating. And from 19th century, but also early 20th century, I must mention Lady Catherine Parson, born in 1859. She was a key figure in advocating for the inclusion and diversity of women in the engineering sector. By managing thousands of women working in, ar in armament factories to support the first World War efforts. Besides, she worked with her husband to develop an electrical turbine that led to the system of electricity being generated by steam turbines, still in use today. Catherine worked for, a greater, for, for greater recognition of female engineers and in 1919, co-founded and led the Women's Engineering Society, a professional learned society, a networking body for women engineers, scientists, and technologists still active. And now let's move to the 20th century with the contribution of several women on what we know today as internet, Wi-Fi, cybersecurity, and many more. And let's start with Grace Hopper who lived from 1906 to 1992, and some of her most important contributions in tech were the idea of automatic programming and new ways to use the computer code when working on the UNIVAC, the first old electronic digital computer. She invented the first computer compiler, which is a program that translates written instructions into codes that computers read directly. She also contributed to, de to the development of COBOL, one of the earliest standardized computer languages and is still in use. Hopper also coined the word bug to describe a computer malfunction. And now let's go, let's continue with Dorothy Vaughn, who was born in 1910 and paved the way for women of color in STEM by teaching herself and her staff at the NASA, the programming language Fortran and becoming the head of the programming section of the analysis and computation division at NASA Langley Research Center. Her contribution was very important in the space race to the moon. And moving forward, I would like to bring Hedy Lamar, who was born in Vienna in 1914 and was both an actress, but also an inventor. One of her most important contributions in this second field is the development of the frequency hopping technology. Reason why she is known as the mother of Wi-Fi and other wireless communications like GPS and Bluetooth. Besides, in 1942, after receiving the patent, she donated the technology to the US military to help fight the Nazis, especially to help guide the torpedoes underwater without being detected. However, this was not used until 1962 in the Q1 missile crisis, earning a great significance. And having mentioned the word, I would like to highlight not just one, but six women programmers of the ENIAC, the first general purpose electronic digital computer, which began to be built in 1943 during the World War II. Since many men were fighting overseas, the army looked to college educated women. Betty Holberton, Kay McNulty, Marlene Westcock, Ruth Linkterman, Betty Jean Jennings, and Fran Villas were in charge of programming the ENIAC to perform calculations for ballistic trajectories electronically for the Army's Re Ballistic Research Laboratory. Although through blueprints and wirings diagrams, because women were not allowed to work in the same room as the ENIAC until the end of its build which didn't happen until the war was over. And it wasn't until the mid 1980s that they were credited for their effort, thanks to Kathy Kleiman, who I will talk about later. But before getting there, I would like to bring Katherine Johnson, born in 1917. She was a mathematician and aerospace technologist at NASA, and she made significant contributions to the first human space flights and the moon landing with methods that are still in use today. Talking about the, the women in the NASA, I, will, I must mention Mary Jackson, born in 1921, who became the first black woman engineer at NASA during segregation in the US. She worked as an aerospace engineer understanding airflow, thrust, and drag forces, 
by analyzing data from wind tunnels and real aircraft flights. Her contributions helped to improve United States planes. And now, I would like to bring Adele Koss, born in 1928, who worked with Grace Hopper, mentioned before. Adele was the first programmer to attempt word processing when working in a project called Editing Generator, a sophisticated program to automatically format data for printing and in which she was able to create margins, headings, and page numbers on the fly. Besides, she also wrote some of the first sorting programs and played a key role in designing and development of one of the first database systems that store and receive graphic images. I would like to also introduce Barbara Liskov, born in 1939. She is a professor and head of the programming methodology group at MIT. She became the first woman in the US to be awarded a PhD from a computer science department when she was awarded her degree from Stanford University. Barbara demonstrated the utility, the utility of abstract data types as practical basis for programming by developing the CLU programming languages, which is a powerful program, programming paradigm that is the basis of widely used programming languages like Java, C++, Python, and other used for object-oriented programming. Her contributions shape modern programming languages, programming methodologies, and distributed systems. And now, a woman with an important contribution to cybersecurity, Dorothy Denning. She was born in 1945, and she has contributed to the improvement of data security with encryption technology. Dorothy introduced timestamps in key distribution protocols, cryptographic checksum for multi-level database security, and a method for improving the security of digital signature with RSA and other poorly key crypto systems. Having talked about R-space, programming languages, distributed systems, and Wi-Fi and more, I would like to bring now Radia, Radia Perlman, better known as the mother of internet. She was born in 1951, and she invented the spanning tree algorithm and the spanning tree protocol, or STP, which solved a challenging information routing problem, allowing a network to deliver data reliably by making it possible to design the network with redundant links. In other words, this innovation made today's internet possible. And with internet, I would like to talk about Kathy Kleiman. If you still remember, I mentioned her before when talking about the ENIAC programmers. Well, in mid 1980s, when Kathy was an undergraduate, she discovered a picture of the ENIAC women in the archive of the Computer History Museum in California. She was told that they were just models hired to make the machine look better. However, she continued the investigation and discovered the truth. With the help of a director, she traced these women down to share their stories, which led to all six women getting inducted into in the, in the Women in Technology International Hall of Fame in 1997. But besides that, uh, Kathy, who was born in 1964, it's a programmer, an attorney, and a data security auditor who has helped with the Internet Corporation for assigned names and numbers in developing internet policies and continues to fight for fairness and free expression online. She teaches classes on intellectual property and internet governance at the Washington College of Law. In 1968, Susan Wojcicki was born. In 1998, she became involved in the creation of Google when she rented out her garage as an office to Google's co-founder. She became employee number 16 at Google and the first marketing manager in 1999. During this time, she worked on AdSense, Google Analytics, Google Books, and Google Images. She recommended Google to buy YouTube, and an acquisition that took place in 2006. And later, in 2014, she will become CEO of YouTube until February this year. A year after Susan was born, Sheryl Sandberg, another pioneer technology executive, sorry, 
uh, another pioneer technology executive was born. Cheryl also worked at Google in 2001 and leading the online sales and advertising division as the vice president of global online sales and operations. However, in 2008, she moved to Facebook as chief operation officer, responsible of marketing, sales, business development, and human resources. In 2012, Cheryl, Cheryl became the first woman to join Facebook board of director. But in 2022, she left the company to focus on her foundation's philanthropy. Another important mention from Google is Marisa Meyer, born in 1975, who joined Google in 1999, becoming Google's first female engineer and employee number 20. Her name ended up on patents for some of Google's most important products, and she is responsible for the clean and simple look and feel of Google search. By 2005, she was vice president of product and user experience. However, in 2012, she left Google to take Yahoo's CEO position until Verizon acquired Yahoo back in 2017. Uh, moving forward, I will also like to bring Nashley Cephus, born in 1985. She's an entrepreneur and computer engineer specialized in artificial intelligence and machine learning. She led the Amazon visual search team in the design and implementation of computer vision algorithm, deep learning models and testing on the Amazon shopping app. She is co-founder and CEO of the Beampath, a nonprofit organization assisting individuals and startups with technical expertise and guidance. So we have been talking about real women in tech. And as I mentioned before, there are many more in history and many more to come. Some of them, you may have known them already through movies in which they have been mentioned like hidden figures. Movies and TV shows have introduced very tax savvy women that have earned the attention and heart of the public. However, usually the stereotype of these computer geniuses differs from reality and show women that tend to be travel, outspoken, or with obvious character quirks like compelling hair or an eccentric way of dressing. Angelina Jolie was probably the first actress with a fictional character of a female computer genius when she perform, performed as Kay Levy in Hackers back in 1995. In this movie, a group of teenage hackers, including Kate Levy, take down an evil corporate overlord sys admin. And despite she is the only woman of the team, she is very confident and better at everything than her teammates. Also, from 1995, we have Angela Bennett, a system analyst and remote worker that helps to detect bugs and viruses in the systems from the DNET movie. Another fictional character is Willow Rosenberg from 1996 Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a computer nerd teenage hacker who, ha who was the best friend of Buffy, the main character. And as a fun fact, it was in a Buffy episode that Google was used for the first time on, as a verb on TV. It happened on October 15, 2002. In 1999, we met Trinity, a computer programmer and a hacker who has escaped from the matrix, a sophisticated computer program in which most of the human race is imprisoned as virtual slaves. In 2003, NCIS introduced Abby Shuto, a, cr a crime lab tech of the Naval Crime Investigation Service. Another teenage hacker was Cindy McKenzie from the 2004 TV show, Veronica Mars. Mac was a computer hacker, teenage, uh, teen genius who helped Veronica solve many crime cases. In, 2000, in 2005, we met Lisbeth Salander from the Millennium Series, a digital feminist that uses her ability as a hacker to fight crime. Also in 2005, we met Penelope Garcia, a technical analyst of the Behavioral Analysis Unit of the FBI who was recruited from the FBI after being in one of the FBI's lists that concerned a small handful of extremely talented yet dangerous hackers in the world. 
Felicity Smoke was introduced in 2012, an MIT graduate with a degree in cybersecurity and computer science, and former hacker recruited into a crime fighting group. She will become CEO of Palmer Technologies and subsequently found her own company, Smoke Tech. In a more recent representation, in 2018, we met Leslie Jordan, or Nimble, a professional hacker who lives with her sister, Veronica, another technical genius. Also from 2018, we have Shuri, a genius inventor, scientist, warrior, and princess of Wakanda. She runs the Gadget Lab, where all her innovations come to life. As in real life, there are more fictional women in tech that you may know and were not included here. However, what is important is that by making women more visible in stories of empowered women in tech, could inspire younger generations to follow a career in STEM and to reduce the challenges for women in a male-dominated field and workspace. Thankfully, fearless women around the world have stepped up and are actively working to reduce the, these gaps through organizations that are creating spaces for more women in tech through networking, job boards, mentoring, education, and more. Just to mention a few, here it is Ada, De Ada Developers Academy, a free nonprofit coding school for women and gender expansive adults with a training program that offers a collaborative learning environment as well as individualized support to mentors, mental health support, and affinity groups. Black Girls Code is an organization that aims to support young and twin girls of color to help provide them with the resources they need to succeed in STEM fields and show girls at an early age that a career in technology is an option. Code Like a Girl is an organization that looks to provide girls and women with the confidence tools, knowledge, and support to enter and thrive in the world of coding. Girl Develop It offers affordable web and software development courses in a judgment-free zone. The organization goal is to help remove barriers from women and non-binary people through live and hybrid workshops on career topics on one-on-one -on -one instructor studies and member learning and network and networking events. Girls in Tech is a nonprofit organization that aims to stop gender inequality in the tech industry by empowering women through coding courses, boot camps, and hackathons for girls and women of all ages and professions. Girls Who Code is an organization dedicated to closing the gender gap in technology and redefining what it means to be a coder. It includes after school clubs, summer courses and programs, and career counseling and networking support for college students. Women in STEM is an organization that pairs college students and professionals with high school girls to encourage them to stay engaged in STEM. The goal is to increase representation in the STEM fields through one-on-one -on -one mentoring partnerships. Women in Tech is an organization focused on fostering diversity, equity, and inclusion in STEM by promoting the empowerment of girls and women globally in education, business, digital inclusion, and advocacy. Women Hack is an organization that promotes gender equality in technology and helps people get hired at companies committed to diversity in the, work, in the workplace. They take a unique approach by vetting companies to ensure that they are committed to things like equal pay, career advancement, and leadership opportunities. Women Who Code is an organization that focuses on empowering women in technology and redefining the industry so that women are equally represented in leaders, executive, founders, venture capitals, board members, and software engineers. The focus is on empowering women with the coding and programming skills. They need to advance their that, that need to advance in their careers, educating companies and how to promote, retain, and hire women, and establishing a global community of mentoring and support for women engineers. 
Switch is a media and technology company that creates and delivers content, programming co products and service design to raise awareness of issues related to inequality and inclusion in the technology industry. Their, their goal is to create a more diverse and inclusive environment, especially when it comes to startups. Tech Ladies is an organization that focuses on connecting members with jobs and opportunities in technology through an online network, a free job board and events, and resources to help members learn new skills to grow their careers. Tech Women is an initiative of the U.S. Department of State Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. The, glo the global organization brings together women in the STEM fields from Africa, Central and South Asia, and the Middle East, with those working in Silicon Valley and, Sa and San Francisco to build a stronger network in the industry. Change Catalyst is an organization focused on tech diversity for women and minorities. It builds inclusive tech ecosystems through strategic advice, program startups and resources, and a series of events around the world. League of Women Coder is a grassroots collective for coders, hackers, and anyone interested in learning more about programming. Alpha is a hybrid professional and social media community of women seeking career changes, job searches, and counseling in one safe place. Ladies get paid in which through networking, fireside chats, virtual lunches, web webinars, and more, members gain advices on careers, finances, business, and life. Women in Innovation is an organization with, mon with monthly events that bring a var variety of innovators to explore topics such as leadership, development, and growth. Built by Girls is a community for women ages 18 to 22, to support those who are taking the first step in their careers. They, they provide one-on-one -on -one relationship with experts, advisors, invitations to events, designed to develop tactical skills and access to a network of technology professionals. The next IT Girls connects students, technologies, and companies to create an ecosystem of innovation and drive the necessary technological changes. They do this by educating, mentoring, and promoting young women of color ages 8 to 22 in computing and information technology. Girl Boss is a community of a strong, curious, and ambitious women who redefine success on their own terms. Their mission is to inform, entertain, and inspire action through content and experiences. And you are and you, are you contributing in any way to elevating women in tech, driving inclusion, inclusion and closing the diversity gap? Thank you for joining, and I hope you have enjoyed this talk. Great, Veronica. Thank you. There are so many organizations about women in tech. Maybe not everybody knows. It's, I think it's good tips for, for the women and also the men. And that is there any women that you, any woman of that that you like most? Well, uh, when I started the research, it was very interesting to find all these women. I mean, I knew about some of them, but not all of them. So it was a very interesting research and findings. I, I really like the the Kathy Clayman story about the picture for from the uh, ENIAC programmers. Because I mean, she was told that they were models for the for the machine, and in, in reality, they were programmers of the machine. So it was really interesting to find that. Ah, nice to know. Great, thank you. And I want to thank you for this presentation to to separate everything for us. Thank you, everybody that is watching us for your time. Now, Veronica can answer any question in the chat. And um, if you want to go to the next session, go back to the, our website, uh, devweek.com, and review your agenda there so you can go to the next one, okay? Thank you, Veronica. I hope you can uh, see you again soon. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.